here. Good evening and welcome to the Stormcast, home of CPU Athletics. This is Brent Winterhoff and Casey Essling with tonight's Boys Womack East Conference game between the Center Pointer Band of Storm and Pointers and the West Delaware Hawks. Both teams come in 0-10 come in on the season, looking for their first win tonight. And last night, William, or West Delaware faced Williamsburg, and they came out on the short end 61-46. to CPU has not played a game since January 5th, so we'll see what the layoff does for the Storm and Pointers. In the game earlier tonight, a very exciting one. In the sophomore game, CPU won that one 43-41. to Unfortunately, there's really no scores to share from last week. We're trying to get the girls game up so we can follow along um, up in Manchester and keep you updated on that game. And our email address is huddle, H-U-D-L, at cpuschools.org if you'd like to send us a shout-out. All right, Casey, want to give a big shout-out to our awesome sponsors? Sure will. Uh, starting off with Centerpoint Foods. They remind you to shop local and win big. Centerpoint Foods is proud to sponsor CPU students and the area communities. Ability Physical Therapy in Centerpoint specializes in the evaluation and treatment of sports and orthopedic injuries. Call and schedule a free injury consult for sprains, strains, and pains today. Hiawatha's Bank & Trust offers a wide range of banking services. They're invested in the community, and it all starts with our students. Best of luck, CPU, from Hiawatha Bank & Trust. Discerning Wealth is a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC. They are dedicated to helping you make better financial decisions. Best of luck, CPU. Elite Fitness is a 24-hour facility which provides its members with the opportunity to achieve their fitness goals at their convenience. Speed School, personal training, and RMR testing are available for those who wish to take the next step in their fitness journey. Contact Elite Fitness and join today. Centerpoint Family Dentistry is a small town dental practice with small town touches of caring and, and personal attention. Best of luck to CPU from Drs. Hickey and Hill at Centerpoint Family Dentistry. The 2022-2023 school year kicked off some great additions to the athletic programs with the athletic boosters purchasing a doctor dish for basketball, tents for soccer and track, and also a new pitching machine for softball, raising $30,000 with the help of the community. The athletic boosters sponsor the fall kickoff, homecoming cookout, can drives, and also the athletic calendars to provide these items for the athletes. As always, they are looking for new members and ideas to help for future projects. Meetings are held the second Wednesday of each month at 6 p.m. in the high school commons area. Athletic memberships are available on the Infinite Campus link, which can be found on the CPU website. As always, your donation to the boosters is greatly appreciated, not only by the athletic boosters, but also the coaches and athletes. Thank you all who have supported the Athletic Boosters, and good luck to the Storm and Pointers. Upcoming events at CPU. Tomorrow, Wednesday, January 17th, uh, CPU Booster Club has their meeting at 6 p.m. Thursday, January 18th, 18th eSports uh, goes against Iowa Falls Alden at 4 p.m. 7th grade basketball is at home versus Mount Vernon at 4.15. 8th grade boys basketball is at Mount Vernon at 4.15. And high school boys and girls wrestling are versus Marion at home at 6 p.m. Friday, January 19th, middle school girls wrestling is home versus Albernette, Grinnell, and Independence at 4.15. 9th, 10th, varsity boys basketball at Marion, 4.36 and 7.15. Walmart girls wrestling tournament at Clear Creek Amana, 5 p.m. And JV varsity girls basketball is home versus Marion, 6 o'clock and 7.15 are the, the times for that. Saturday, January 20th, the FTC slash robotics meet is at Prairie Point Middle School, large group district speech contest at Monticello, and high school boys home wrestling tournament is at 9 a.m. starting. Um, this will be also on the Stormcast if you're unable to make it. All right. West Delaware is led in scoring by junior Griffin Lott, averaging eight points per game, and junior Keegan Jackson at 7.1. Junior Seth Jackson leads the way on the boards, averaging 3.8 rebounds per game. And as a team, the Hawks are shooting 34.7% from the field, 27.4% from the three-point line, and 51.1% from the free throw line. They are scoring 42 points a game and giving up 61.4 points per game. West Delaware is coached by head coach Drake Schuring. He's assisted by Jay Salo and Brad Lott. CPU is led in scoring by sophomore Cooper Grimm, averaging 11.6 points per game. 
He's followed by senior Hunter Holmes at 10.8. On the boards, junior Nathan Miller leads the way, averaging 4.8 boards per game. Grimm is also getting 4.6 rebounds per game. Junior Jackson Brinks is dishing out two assists per game, and Grimm is dishing out 2.1 assists per game. As a team, the Storm and Pointers are shooting 37% from the field, 23.3% from the three-point line, and 59.2% from the free throw line. They are averaging 45.1 points per game and giving up 61.7. The Storm and Pointers are coached by Mike Halleck in his 10th year. He's assisted by Dylan Humpel, Jason Jaquette, and Chad Batchelor. All right. And also the makeup games, they are rescheduled now. The first one that I know is at home will be next Monday as the girls will face... I believe Vinton Shellsburg next Monday here in a makeup game. So get on the school website and find out when the makeup games are. Um, and so you don't miss any action. And we'll have all the home ones here on the Stormcast, even the makeup ones. All yeah. right. So when I was looking at stats for these two teams and looking at some of their stats and following games, rebounding was a big play. We talked about that in the Grinnell game on the 5th. CP did a nice job of rebound. He gave up a few offensive rebounds, but overall really did a good job, and the game was close. We were right there. Yeah. And we Same thing for West Delaware. Yeah, the games they got beat bad, they have no offensive rebounds. The other team has tons of them, and that's it doesn't turn out so well for them. Yeah, and it looks like, I mean, when you look at the, the comparative stats, they're, they're very close between the two teams, and we're actually averaging more points than they are. At 45.1 versus 42 points a game, um, and and I think the rebounding piece is probably one of the biggest because neither neither team shoots great from the from the field. So uh, the rebounding piece, if we can keep them off the offensive boards and we can get some offensive rebounds and putbacks, it's going to make a huge difference for us tonight. And if we if we get up and down the floor and get some easy buckets to get going, I think that's going to make a big difference. The other too. thing uh, that happened last night in the game for West Delaware they were 9 for 27 from three point range so they only scored 46 points so 27 of those were three pointers yeah so we'll see if they you know keep chucking up a bunch of three pointers or you know what they're going to decide to do tonight all right we'll get the starting lineups here in just a second for the Hawks they'll be starting six foot junior Levi Wilson Breeze 6'2 junior Seth Jackson 6'1", senior, Conrad Smith, 6'4", junior, Keegan Jackson, and 5'11", junior, Griffin Lott. The Hawks will be in their black uniforms with white numbers trimmed in orange. And for CPU, they'll be starting 6'4", sophomore, Cooper Grimm, 6'3", sophomore, Kinnick Covington, 6'1", junior, Jackson Brinks, 6'3", junior, Nathan Miller, and 6'3", senior, Hunter Holmes. CPU will be in their home white uniforms with yellow numbers and black trim. You know, not a bad crowd for um, no school and freezing outside. Yeah. And it looks like we have a whiteout, which is very appropriate there for the uh, dog pound. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, without our game officials, tonight's contest would not be possible. Yeah, it's been uh, an interesting last week and a half of uh, weather-wise, so it was nice to at least get a game in so we're not having to start getting a bunch of games back to back. I think the boys are a little bit further down the road, but the girls have got this yeah, coming Monday. Yeah, they do have an extra Monday. week and a half to get some games in yeah. compared to the girls. And we do have the girls' game starting online. They're not quite there at about 250 away from starting, so they'll be a little bit behind us uh, for tonight's game. And you also feel bad because... All the, the freshmen, all of them didn't get to play in their regular game tonight. And then also junior high games are being missed too, which those kids. Yeah, they usually don't make those up either. Yeah, so. or they might make up a couple of them, but they can't get up all in. Yeah. Um, and also those are ones that, like on a day like today, they were supposed to play and they don't get a chance to play, whereas they do try to get the high school games in. Yeah. You know, they don't. The other thing about West Delaware, they don't look overly big either. So, no. I mean, we, we might actually. We match up with them yeah. very well. So, it'll be an interesting game. It's probably an evenly matched, matched game. 
without playing since last Friday, though, it, it does, uh, you never know. The sophomore game, or the fresh soft game was a little Yeah, a little really streaky. Tag, yeah. They'd make a few in a row and then one score for <laughs> yeah. um, six, seven minutes, yeah. it seemed like. I don't know, did West Delaware have school today? Um, I do not know. It looked like they did. Um, I didn't see them on the list anyway. It seemed like most of the schools that were south of us were the ones that didn't have school. North went two hours late and kind of kept it there. Yeah. All right, so we'll get ready to get started here. And at this time, we will have our Star Spangled Banner. All right, I'm sure the boys are anxious to get started tonight, and, and the girls up in Manchester, sitting at home for these days. It's kind of getting, gets kind of long. Yeah, it's good to get out, get out of the house, right? Yep, get out and get to do something. Yeah. Nothing better than having a ball game. What else are you going to do, right? Exactly. All right, and on the court for CPU is Graham Covington, Brinks, Miller, and Holmes. And for the Hawks, Wilson Breeze, Jackson Smith, Keegan Jackson, and Lott. And jump goes to the Hawks. Smith bringing it down man-to-man -man by the Storm and Pointers. Little weave back. Covington trying to cover up the middle there. CP doing a nice job, and the three-pointer is off. That was by Keegan Jackson. Grimm bringing it down the left side. Covington over to Holmes. Holmes spins. Puts it. Oh, almost got it too. Kind of lost the ball on the way up. Had to push it a little bit. Not a bad attempt. It almost went in too. Not expecting a real high scoring game tonight. So we'll see what happens. And that is Lott's first foul. And Holmes is shooting 88% from the free throw line. Could not get the first one to fall. And second one is up and in. CPU gets the first score here. CPU in a, a press. Not sure what kind of press. They had three, three lined up across the baseline. Oh, they tip it. And picked up by Lott. He's driving. Shut down by Grimm. Over to Jackson. And he's in the lane there. That is Smith. Puts it up and is off. Rebounded by Miller. Gets it over to Grimm. Pushing it up on the right side. It's good defense by Brinks here on the Gets drive. Gets it to Miller, Miller. Underneath for two. 3-0 lead by the Storm and Pointers. It's a good pass. Was that... Cooper Grimm, I yeah, think Grimm found that. him underneath. 
A weave here on top. Kick it back to Lott. And we got a three-pointer. It is up and in by Conrad Smith. Ties it up at three. Underneath Another to Miller. Pass. Covington out to Holmes. Holmes is going to shoot the three. He is off. Is Rebounded by Jackson. It's a great pass by Covington to get it out to Hunter in a great, great spot for him. He likes the corner three, too. On top to Keegan Jackson. Now Smith has it drives. Oh, good pass. By Grimm, Reba, er, steals it. And oh. goes up for a jam. They didn't even contest that. That was a, a perfect pass to Cooper for a fast break jam. Yeah, Conrad Smith has it. He drives in. Lot Time kicks it out. It. Oh, that's a two-pointer. He's off on that. Grimm pushing it up, gets it up to Brinks. And can't get it. But good hustle by Grimm, gets it back. Kind of led Brinks just a little bit too much there. Grimm going in. That was a great pass. Yeah, play. to Covington cutting the lane. Grimm has started off with some really nice passing there. Three-pointer is off, rebounded by Grimm. He's off and running again. Well, it looks like we should be able to beat him up and down the floor. Oh. Gets it into Miller, back to Grimm. Grimm shoots his jump shot. It is off. Oh, got the zone rebound. Oh, just shoot it, Cooper. No hurry here. Still 30 seconds. Get to start that shot clock over again. Going to set it up with Grimm on top. 7-3, storming pointer lead. Brinks has it. Holmes puts it up and is off. Rebounded by Covington. We're doing a good job of getting the loose balls right now, which is making a big difference. We can turn them into points here. Brinks on the right side, man to man by the Hawks. Gets it to Grimm. Gets it to Covington. Oh. And it's going to stick with the storming pointers. We have some subs here for the Hawks. It's going to be. Uh, Snyder's, Carnicle, and I thought there was one other one coming in. Anyway, for CPU, it's Savola and uh, Carter Andrews is back yep. after his. Oh, we got another eight. rebound here. Yeah. Savola lost it on this way up. Seven three, Storm and Pointer lead. Snyder's Travis. passed it out to Conrad Smith, and Smith, they call for traveling. So on the court for CPU is Savola, Andrews, Holmes, Grimm, and Covington. Holmes has it now out to Andrews. Savola Drives in, puts it up off the right side. That's a good take by Savola. Yeah, 9-3 CPU lead. Oh, good hustle, good hustle. Covington. Covington gets it to Andrews. Over to Grimm. Grimm's pushing it up. Attack the rim here. Good job. Uh-oh. Threw it out to nobody, but Savola tracked it down. Andrews has it now up to Holmes. Holmes looking. He's going to fake. Like travel, oh, and yeah. lays it in. And CPU has an 11-3 lead, and we have a timeout by West Delaware with 3.03 left in the first period. This is Brent Winterhoff and Casey Essling on the Stormcast, home of CPU Athletics. All right, a full timeout. A word from our sponsors here. Center, po Center Point Food reminds you to shop local and win big. Center Point Foods is proud to sponsor CPU students and the area communities. Abil ability Physical Therapy and Center Point specializes in the evaluation and treatment of sports and orthopedic injuries. Call and schedule a free co injury consult for sprains, strains, and pains today. 
Hiawatha Bank and Trust offers a wide range of banking services. They're invested in the community, and it all starts with our students. Best of luck, CPU from Hiawatha Bank and Trust. Discerning Wealth is a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC. They are dedicated to helping you make better financial decisions. Best of luck, CPU. Elite Fitness is a 24-hour facility which provides its members with the opportunity to achieve their fitness goals at their convenience. Speed School personal training and RMR testing are available for those who wish to take the next step in their fitness journey. Contact Elite Fitness and join today. All right. Um, Kale Esling and Miller returned to the lineup here. Clay Covington and Holmes are on the bench now. All right. Smith bringing it up. CPU in a 1-2-2 two, two here. Switching it up a little bit here. Probably not a bad move since they're not great shooters. Yeah, they really need to still not let them get started no. from the three-point range because I don't think they can get it inside too easily. No, they don't have any post presence at all. Oh, okay. Smith gets it on top. They just don't get him a wide open look. Ah, uh, too easy. That was uh, Austin Snyder's for the bucket. So 11-5, Storm and Pointer lead. Savoa has it in the middle, or the right Three. side. Three-pointer, 14-5, Storm and Pointer lead. Oh, looked like a foul by Savoa, but they didn't call it. Oh, over Miller's. He had position, just yeah, could not just, get the rebound there. Just didn't box him out. Oh, he traveled. Oh. He didn't call it. That was Wilson Breeze driving. Here's Smith again. He seems to be the hot one there, and he gets it in. 14 7. It's five points for Smith. Andrews has it. Now over to Essling. Essling stops. Kicks it good, out to good, Miller. Good kick by Cooper to Miller, but he. And Savoa picks it up. Good hustle by Miller. Didn't give up on it there. Esling has it on top. Setting it up here to see what they got here. Well, Esling in the corner. He looks to shoot it, drives in, fouled. Miller has it, gets it to Grimm. Having a hard time 13 seconds. It seems like it's, it's all over the place. You can't get a good grip, grip on it. Man, oh man. Gonna have to shoot it. And he does and is short on that. I noticed in the JV game, too, it's like we're not dribbling the ball hard enough. It's just like yeah. we're letting it fall. And it doesn't come back to us. <laughs> or it's not inflated. I don't or know. Or it's not inflated. Yeah. Maybe I, it's an inflate <laughs> gate here or deflate <laughs> gate. Okay, 52 seconds left in the first period. 14-7, Storm and Pointer lead. CP went back to their man-to-man -man here. Yeah, they just played one possession of that zone. Oh, foul there. It's going to be on Savoa as Lott was taking it to the hoop on the left side. It's only been two two fouls the entire game. So the shot clock will start over. Yeah. So it's so they could use about the a hole. second off from the game clock. Oh, uh, man. And Lott takes it to the hoop on the out-of-bounds play and... Puts it in, we'll get a chance for the traditional three-point play here. Foul on Brinks, his first. Well, we could take one shot here if we And free throw is up and in. And we have Leva, or Wilson Breeze coming back in the lineup for the Hawks. So the shot clock is off here, so CP can go for the last shot if they wish to. Looks like Hawks are sticking with man-to-man. -man. We're a little more aggressive here than we normally are. Oh, Good nice pass. pass by Kale Esling. Oh. oh, and Covington is just off on that shot. So that was a good shot, and they get a stop here before half, or before the end of the quarter. 10 seconds left. Oh, man. And three-pointer there by McCauley. And shot. Oh, nice shot there by Breeze, or by Brinks, just off. 
And it brings us to the end of one with CPU up 14 to 13. This is Brent Winterhoff and Casey Essling on the Stormcast, home of CPU Athletics. Yeah, our sponsors here, I'll finish the group of sponsors. The Center Point Family, Center Point Family Dentistry is a small town dental practice with small town touches of caring and personal attention. Best of luck to CPU from Drs. Hickey and Hill at Center Point Family Dentistry. The 2022-2023 school year kicked off some great additions to the athletic programs with the athletic boosters purchasing a doctor dish for basketball, tents for soccer and track, and also a new pitching machine for softball. Raising $30,000 with the help of the community, the athletic boosters sponsor the fall kickoff, homecoming cookout, can drives, and also athletic calendars to provide these items for the athletes. As always, they're looking for new members and ideas to help with future projects. Meetings are held the second Wednesday of each month at 6 p.m. in the high school commons area. Athletic memberships are available on Infinite Campus, which can be found on the CPU website. There's a link there. As always, your donation to the boosters is greatly appreciated, not only to the athletic boosters, but also to the coaches and athletes. Thank you to all who have supported the athletic boosters, and good luck to the Stormy Corners. All right, we have an update in Manchester. A minute 50 left in period number one, and the Storm and Pointers are up. Four to two. Not Four a, to two. Not a lot of scoring. Not a lot of scoring. CPU's going to get the ball here <laughs> to start the um, half. Second quarter here. And we'll also try to get there as a big game, number one versus number two down in Solon in girls basketball. And got an illegal screen on Illegal Carter screen Andrews. on Andrews there. All right, yeah, so I'll try to get an update there on following Mr. Brands, the high school principal. We had a, not a great end of the first quarter here. We hopefully we can get going here to start the second. Lot drives in. He stopped. Kicked out. Three-pointer is off. Uh, we didn't rebound well no, there. Lot is he hustles and gets, gets those loose ball rebounds. There for a while we were getting all of them, and now they're kind of getting those. And also their offense is really picking it up here against the man-to-man. -man. Kick it out. Smith, he's going to shoot the three. It is off. Rebounded by Grimm. Good pass. Good job. Covington, Covington. Oh. just cannot put it in. No. He's getting some easy looks. He's just got to focus in and knock those down. They kick it out to Lott. Good news Grimm is on him. We're in the right spots. Uh -oh. oh, drive put in on the right side by Seth Jackson. And the Hawks take the lead, 14 to 15. And they get it in. And Holmes gets it out. Brinks looking to drive. Shut down there. Driving to the basket again. And it's blocked. And we'll stick with the Storm and Pointers. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. And Wilson Breeze coming back in for the Hawks. CPU taken out underneath. And they get it into Grimm. They switched off on that one. They usually take yeah. the hand off or hand it off. Five seconds on the shot clock. Grimm's got to do something. Grimm, Tough beautiful shot. shot there, yeah. yeah. Puts it in. Gives the Storm and Pointers a 16-15 lead. See, I thought he should have done it a few times in the first quarter yeah. when he was in there. He kicked it out. Yeah. But he has Almost. such a beautiful jump shot from there. It's, you know, five, six, seven-foot shot compared to a 17-foot yeah. shot. Wilson Breeze driving in, and he gets it off. Rebounded by Holmes. Get the ball inside. Kenny's got a post up. He's got a guy that's about six inches shorter than him. Yeah, he gives up on the post up too yeah. quick there. He needs to stick with it a little longer. They're just switching everything, so screen the screen or slip the screen. I think they'll be fine. They're all the same size, and we're yeah. all the same size, so it doesn't really matter if they <laughs> switch the screen. Ooh, we traveled. Yep. Good pass to Covington. Oh, and, and he gets it, it to fall. Wow. We get a couple nice yeah. possessions right at the end of the uh, 
shot clock was going off. And so Covington's going to go to the line to finish off the traditional three-point play. And Nathan Miller coming back in for the Storm and Pointers. And Savola will be in for Covington in just a second. That foul was on Jackson. That's his first foul. And Covington puts it in. 19-15 Storm and Pointer lead. Okay, did a good job of scoring that one and then making the free throw. CP's trapping there. And they get it across to Wilson Brees. He's getting it over. And kind of loses it. Picked up there by Miller. He gets it over to Brinks. Brinks pushing it up. Holmes in the corner. Kicks it back to Brinks. In, in. Oh, man. Don't leave. Brandon Miller was wide open, and he left before he could throw it into him. Here it's they get it into Miller. It's almost like if we're in the lane more yeah, than we a don't second, wanna... we, we get out of there too fast. And off there, Miller gets that rebound. He's pushing it up. Gets it to Grimm in the middle. Grimm's going to shoot the Shoulder. three. It is off. We didn't have any offense. And Wilson Breeze gets that rebound. And there we got a three pointer uh, by only, Seth Jackson. Only, only a two. two. Didn't get that right foot back far enough. 19 17 Storm and Pointer lead. 4.05 left in the second period. Brinks has it. Hands off to Grimm. Grimm shoots that jumper. It's off. We got to get a few guys getting their rebound. We got nobody rebounding. Smith has it. Gets it back. Three pointer is off. Holmes has got to box him out hard. Get him out of the lane. Secure the rebound. What do we have? Oh, we got it. Foul on. Legal screen there. 32. Austin so Snyder. Jackson, Ke Keegan Jackson comes back into the lineup. And Boston McCauley for the Hawks. For CPU, they have Kale Essling and Carter Andrews back in the lineup. 3.38 left. CPU up by two. Savoa has it on the right side. Our scoring has kind of slowed down a little yeah. bit here. Our movement on the offensive yeah. end has kind of slowed down too. And actually the Hawks have picked it up a little bit. Yeah. Savoa tries it, cannot get it to fall. It's a good take by Savoa, just couldn't put it in. Wilson Breeze has it, kicks it out, and it is off, rebounded by Grimm. Keep pushing. Push, push, push. And he holds right it up, oh, gets it into Andrews. Noah's doing a good job of flashing to the ball. We just never get him the ball in there. Yeah. Oh, good oh. muscle, Miller. Oh, can't quite get it. And Bree Wilson Breeze comes out with it. Essling picks him up. And Snyder's. Smith has it now in the middle of the lane. He goes, kicks it out to Snyder's. He's driving in. He's pushed by Savoa. Yeah. Savoa and does that sometimes. He bumps him with his chest. So That's we did start over with fouls again, so that was our first, or second, that's excuse me. So both teams have two team fouls, and that's Savoa's second. second foul. Pretty much what we were expecting as far as the, the scoring goes. Yeah, it started off a little quicker, yeah, though. It's kind of much, slowed much down faster. here a little bit. Lott has it, now hands it off to Wilson Breeze. Oh, he traveled. Uh, wanted to pass it, just could not get it off quick enough there. And Brinks coming in the lineup. He's coming in for Savola. CPU's up 19-17, two and a half left in the second. Grimm is bringing it down the right side. We've got to see if we can get the ball inside to Covington. If he can post up a little, that guy's... He's strong, but he's not. Or run it and do the back door. Oh, like oh, right man, there. there. Right there, he had it. Had him on his hip. Andrews has it. They got to slip the screen when they switch that screen. When they, Every time they screen, they switch it. Brinks driving in. That's oh, finish it off. Oh. Cannot finish. And Lott brings it down. Good hustle by Brinks. That was a great hustle. And gets it got to it. Our Andrews. He's driving in. 
Oh, oh. scored it. And got it to fall. He's on 20 fouls on number 22, Griffin Lott, his second foul. That was a great take by Andrews, hard to the hoop. It's good to have him back. He hasn't played for quite a few games. I'm not even sure how many. Yeah, it's quite been. a few. Yeah, it's probably been a good month maybe. Yeah, I think it, it was for sure early December, maybe second week in December. And puts that one in. 22-17, Storm and Pointer lead. Picking them up full court here, trying to trap in the oh. corner. And they're going to call a foul on Andrews. That'll be the third team foul. So that's on both here. That's and that's Andrews', Andrews second. second foul. And Conrad Smith coming back in the lineup for the Hawks. Sometimes we're just a little too aggressive and we use our chest rather than just straight up. Especially that far away from the yeah, basket. There's no re oh, man, he got another one. Hustle. That was a good and hustle by Andrews. 17-footer there. Oh. Not able to get it to fall. And now Covington's going to get the rebound on the miss by, by Seth Jackson. Yeah, he did a good job of hustling, getting rebound, and just missing the putback. Andrews has it. Hands it off to Holmes. Holmes. Jackson no. Brinks is off. Way oh, short. good hustle there. Almost had that one. Over to Seth Jackson. Now Keegan. And Jackson puts it Big up, is off, rebounded by Covington. Covington. A minute left here in quarter number two. Holmes has it. Now Grimm. They've got a triple screen for Hunter Holmes. They just switch it. And good move by, oh. oh, almost had, and Covington almost had that rebound on the shot by Grimm. I'll take that shot. That's a good shot. One second difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Looks like they're going to. So Smith has it. Now Wilson over to Smith. Smith still dribbling, goes hard, and, oh, misses it. Five seconds left. Grimm has it, Touch off it. to Covington. Good hustle. Oh, oh good and he job. puts it in and Covington. gets fouled. Didn't even dribble once. Oh, no, that was great. Great he, pass if, there by Grimm. That was. That was a tough pass and catch. Falls on 30. McCauley, that's his first. That was a super tough catch. And yeah, he in. was between two people. Yeah. I was thinking, don't throw it. He kept, yeah, he kept it up high, which, which prevented it from getting knocked away. That was a great job by Covington. And he will get the free throw here. And at halftime, we will get the stats and share them with you. Right. And he puts that one in. So just a second left, long shot. Ooh, oh, pretty good close. shot there by Smith. But we come to the end of two. CPU up 25 to 17. This is Brent Winterhoff and Casey Essling on the Stormcast, home of CPU Athletics. Up in Manchester, 3.40 left in period number two, and the Storm and Pointers are leading 11 to 10. Oh, excuse me, they're down one, 12 to 11. All right, in earlier games tonight, in the sophomore game here, they did not play a freshman game. Uh, in the sophomore game, CP won that one, 43 to 41. I do not have the score from the girls' game, and we do not have any scores from the past week as it was uh, all canceled. And our email address is huddle, H-U-D-L, at cpuschools.org. If you'd like to give us a shout-out, we'd love to hear from you. And also a big thank you to our sponsors for the Stormcast. And Centerpoint Foods reminds you to shop local and win big. Centerpoint Foods is proud to sponsor CPU students and the area communities. Ability Physical Therapy in Centerpoint specializes in the evaluation and treatment of sports and orthopedic injuries call and schedule a free injury consult for sprains strains and pains today hiawatha bank and trust offers a wide range of banking services they're invested in the community and it all starts with our students best of luck cpu from hiawatha bank and trust discerning wealth is a private wealth advisory practice of ameriprise financial services llc 
They are dedicated to helping you make better financial decisions. Best of luck, CPU. Elite Fitness is a 24-hour facility which provides its members with the opportunity to achieve their fitness goals at their convenience. Speed School, Personal Training, and RMR testing are available for those who wish to take the next step in their fitness journey. Contact Elite Fitness and join today. Center Point Family Dentistry is a small town dental practice with small town touches of caring and personal attention. Best of luck to CPU from Drs. Hickey and Hill at Center Point Family Dentistry. The 22-23 school year kicked off some great additions to the athletic programs with the athletic boosters purchasing a doctor dish for basketball tents for soccer and track, and also a new pitching machine for softball. Raising $30,000 with the help of the community, the Athletic Boosters sponsor the fall kickoff, homecoming cookout, can drives, and also the athletic calendars to provide these items for the athletes. As always, they are looking for new members and ideas to help for future projects. Meetings are held the second Wednesday of each month at 6 p.m. in the high school commons area. Athletic memberships are available on Infinite Campus, which can be found on the CPU website. As always, your donation to the boosters is greatly appreciated, not only by the athletic boosters, but also by the coaches and athletes. Thank you all who have supported the athletic boosters, and good luck to the Storm and Pointers. All right, activities coming up this week. On uh, tomorrow night, the Booster Club will be meeting at 6 p.m. right here in the high school commons area. On Thursday, January 18th, eSports will be facing Iowa Falls Alden at 4. The 7th grade boys basketball te team will be hosting Mount Vernon at 4.15. And the 8th grade boys basketball team will be at Mount Vernon at 4.15. High school girls and boys wrestling will be hosted right here in this gym against Marion starting at 6 o'clock. And that will be on the Stormcast if you can't make it. On Friday night, January 19th, the middle school girls wrestling team will be hosting Albernet, Grinnell, and Independence for a 4.15 start. The boys basketball team will be at Marion. Freshmen will start at 4.30, sophomores at 6, and varsity at 7.15. The Walmart girls wrestling tournament that night will be at Clear Creek Amana starting at 5 o'clock. The JV Varsity Girls Basketball will be here against Marion starting at 6 for the JV and 7.15 for the Varsity. And that will be on the Stormcast if you, cannot, if you can't make it. On Saturday, January 20th, the FTC Robotics Meet will be at Prairie Point Middle School. Also, the Large Groups District Speech Contest will be at Monticello. And the High School Boys Home Wrestling Tournament will start 9 right here. And if you can't make it up, you can always follow on the Stormcast if you cannot make that one. And also, any of the makeup games we will have on the Stormcast. So make sure you uh, follow along. We'll send out a Twitter announcement, Facebook announcement to let you know when those are. All right, the state rankings for the boys, they came out last on January 8th. They decided not to do one this week because of the lack of games last week. So in 4A, Cedar Rapids Kennedy is ranked number one. Dubuque Senior is third. Um, Iowa City West is eighth. Cedar Falls ninth and Linmar tenth. In 3A, Clear Lake is ranked number one. Waverly Shell Rock is third. Solon is fourth. Decora is fifth. And Mount Vernon is tenth. In 2A, West Lyon is ranked number one. Monticello is third. Hudson is fourth and they'll be to town here a week from Saturday. And Grundy Center is 10th. In 1A, North Lynn is ranked number one. Marquette Catholic Bellevue is ranked second. Uh, Kyoto is seventh. Key Lansing is eighth. And Linville Sully is ninth. On the girls' side, and these rankings last came out January 11th, last Thursday. In 1A, North Lynn is ranked number one. Other area schools rank. Cal Weed is ranked eighth. Linville Sully is 11th, Montezuma 13th. In 2A, Dyke New Hartford is ranked number one. Regina is fourth. Cascade is 10th, Grundy Center 11th, Appleton Parkersburg 13th. 
in 3A. Solon is ranked number one. Mount Vernon is second, and those two are facing off tonight in Solon. We'll try to get updates on that score. Wallard is ranked sixth. Monticello is ninth, and Williamsburg is 15th. In 4A, Dallas Center Grimes is ranked number one. Clear Creek Amana is second. Waverly Shell Rock is fourth. Marion is 10th, and they'll be coming to town on Friday night. Central DeWitt is 14th. Then in 5A, Johnston is ranked number one. Cedar Falls is eighth. Iowa City West is 14th. All right, Casey, you have an update on our Scored, um, scoring? Scoring, yes. So starting with West Delaware, their, uh, their leading scorer is Conrad Smith with five points. Their second leading scorer is Seth Jackson with four points. Griffin Lott has three points. Boston McCauley has three. And Austin Snyder rounds out the scoring with two. They had 17 points in the first half. And they only have one uh, guy with two fouls, and that's Griffin Lott. They only had five team fouls total for the half. Uh, for CPU, our leading scorer is Kenny Covington, who has eight points in the first half. Next up is Cooper Grimm with, I'm sorry, Savola is next up, Ryan Savola with five points. Cooper Grimm with four points. Uh, Carter Andrews with three points. Nathan Bell with two points. And Hunter Holmes with three points. We also only had uh, five total team fouls, but we have two guys with two fouls. Savola and Andrews both have two fouls. We are, let's see, we are four for five from the free throw line. Uh, West Delaware has only shot one free throw. They're one on one from the free throw line. Um, and in the second quarter, we outscored uh, West Delaware 11 to four. So we had a good second quarter. Hopefully that will uh, carry over to the yeah, third really quarter. Yeah, really, we had a good first quarter just the yeah, last the two minutes, yeah. really, because we were up 14 to seven, and then it was 14 to three, I think, at one Four, time. Yeah, even. and then 14 then, to 13. Yeah, so we let them have 10 in a row there. Okay, an update down in Mount Vernon. So on the girls' side, Mount Vernon leads Solon at the end of three, 30 to 25. We'll also get an update at halftime up in Manchester. Kind of had an offensive flurry. CPU's up 20 to 16. And we'll try to get some more scores for you. It's kind of hard to get scores when you start at 6 o'clock. A lot of the games are still in progress. So we'll see what we can find here. Um, here's a halftime score. Grundy Center up on South Harden, 18 to 10. That is in, on the girls' side. And uh, Ballard, who we lost to last a week ago Saturday, um, they're leading Bondurant Farrar with just five minutes to play, 59 to 56. And looks like we don't have many other scores here. Oh, sorry, that was on the boys' side. Sorry, the Ballard score, that was on the boys' side. And they're also all playing at different times tonight, so it's not very consistent. Kind of hard to figure out here what's what's what. If it's boys or girls, right? Yeah, because usually, you know, the girls play first, boys play second, or they're both playing at 7.15. All right, that looks like that's it for now. All right, both teams are back out on the court getting their final instructions. And, you know, CP did a pretty good job on the boards. You know, we had a couple really big offensive flurries where we had, you know, four Multiple or five shots, chances yeah. there. We did also give up a couple of those down there, but not too many. No. Um, but that's an area we just need to take advantage of. And, you know, we like you mentioned, we had some really good shots and just didn't put them in. Yeah. And, if, we, you know, we put those in, we'd be up by 15. We'd be up 15. by, yeah, easily. Yeah, we've, we're getting good shots. We're making some good assists and some good looks um, by the players, and they're looking for each other. And I think we've played pretty good defense overall. Um, and just start settling for if we can just give them one shot, that's the key here. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, man, that's our play. We always run that play. Yeah. On the court for yeah. CPU, we have Miller, Covington, Grimm, Brinks, and Holmes. And we start off with a... Not a good start. Easy two by the Hawks, and then we have an illegal screen by CPU, moving screen. By Nathan Miller. And so that's the first foul on CPU this quarter. 25-19, Storm and Pointer lead. Wilson Breeze has it in the left corner. 
Gets it over to Smith. Looks like they're really going to try to get it inside there to yeah. Jackson. It did look like he was trying to aggressively post up. Not a good start for us with the quick, easy bucket and a turn and a moving screen. So if we can get a stop here. And a three-pointer here is off. Rebounded by Brinks. Going to have to be careful of those, those screens. Yeah. And maybe uh, watching out a little more. Holmes on has it, hands it off to Grimm. Like you said, they're just switching on those. That was good. Oh, nice job by Jackson. I thought he was too far underneath the basket there. Yeah. Puts it in from the left side. 25-21. Storm and Pointer lead. Oh, man, that was a dangerous pass. Covington and Covington it. has it. Gets it out to Grimm. And this is also where you can get some back doors like we did in the first half. Oh, nice. Oh, oh. man. <laughs> wanted an offensive rebound. Yeah, he wanted a rebound. Couldn't believe he was that back. wide open. Yeah. Wow. So tipped by Brinks out of bounds. CPU up 27-21. And the Hawks get it in to Jackson. Setting some picks. Lot going hard. Now Seth Jackson, he's shut down by Miller. Wilson Breeze has it, he's driving in. Back to Lot. Lot looks for the three. And did an under, and Miller gets it now to Grimm. He's pushing it up. Not sure why we're jumping on the threes. They haven't made, made many tonight. They've got one, actually two threes for the night. Holmes has it on the right side. Puts, or, puts it up, excuse me, left side. 29-21, so CPU gets that lead back to eight. Brinks coming down. Oh, well that's travel. Isn't that just travel? Yeah. Jump ball. And the ball will go to the Storm and Pointers. I, know, I thought any time he fell down with the ball, it was travel. Depends on the ref. Sometimes they'll call it immediately. Other times if you move when you're on the ground, they'll call it. So it's, it's hard to say. All right, Grimm has it on the right side here. Hawks have played man-to-man -man all night. Covington on the right side. Now Brinks, he fakes it, drives back. Does a duck under. Oh, it's off, but Covington's there, and he's uh -oh. going to go up. Looks like Brinks sprained his ankle. No. Called a jump ball. Jump ball, and it will go to the Hawks. Brinks looked like he stepped on somebody's ankle when he came down. He's going to walk it off here. Yeah, coach is telling him get up there, yeah. and he's going, uh, he's I'm like, not sure yet walk. about my ankle. <laughs> Eight-point CPU lead. Lott has it. He's driving in. Kicks it out to Smith. He's going to shoot the three up and in. He's got two threes on the night. Two of the three threes that they've made, he's made them. Holmes has it. Now off to Grimm. Grimm's driving in. He, oh. oh, Miller was there. Are you going to give him two tips. rebounds on that? Yeah, I think, I think <laughs> I'd give him two. And then on the second tip, he got fouled trying to put it in. That's uh, Lott's third foul. Looks like they're going to get a sub for him. They got a, CPU's got a few subs coming in. Miller misses the first one. So coming in is Wilson Breeze and Snyders for the Hawks. And Savoa is in for the Storm and Pointers. 4.42 left in the third. And 32-24 lead. Well, they made one of two there. We're up six right and now. And pressure here by the Storm and Pointers. They get it back to Smith. And they get it over to Snyders. He's going to kick it out. Three-pointer is up and in. That is by McCauley. 30-27. Holmes has it. He's driving in. He and Conrad Smith are the only two that have made threes tonight. They each have two. CPU setting it up. Getting to Savoa on the left side. Now Covington. Over to Holmes. Holmes is going to shoot the three, and he is off. 
but rebounded there. Covington had great position. Yeah, he did. Good position. He got the got the almost got the rebound. And Carnical into the lineup for the Hawks. CP gonna line up four across the baseline there. They get it into Covington. Little work, Kinnick. That's a great take by Carter. Yeah, Andrews. he was riding him the whole way. And he got the, he got he got the foul and the yeah. injury. Let's see who it is, number one, which is Levi Wilson Breeze. Yeah, that had to hurt. He just couldn't get out of the way. Yeah. And our trainer's coming out to check him out there a little bit. And a sub for him will be Seth Jackson coming in. So he got hit in the mouth. Wilson Breeze, he's uh, the third leading scorer at 6.8 a game, and he doesn't have any points tonight. All right, and going to the line will be Andrews. Andrews shooting 83% on the season. We have four minutes left in period number three. And that one is short. It's one or two from the line right now. And he will get his second one here. And that one is long, rebounded by Jackson. He gets it to Smith. Carnical has it. Doesn't look real skilled in the post, but oh, oh man. Holmes should have just turned and grabbed that ball and had a fast break. Smith driving in, kicks it out to McCauley. He's wanting to get a hand up, and he's the other one, 11. Conrad Smith. Kicks it out to, and he hits the three. And that was by Snyders, Snyders, and we tie it up at 30. CP just had an eight-point lead, and it's down to zero here. 325 left in the third period. Savoa has it on top. He's driving in. Going to be an offensive foul. On Savoa. Oh, that's his third. I didn't see the push off. Yeah, he raised his arm when he was yeah. driving. Yeah, we've only scored five points in the third um, quarter. We got so six far. here. Got six, coach. All right, CPU. One way to gain an advantage, right? Yeah, man to man here. Hawks have a chance to take the lead. Need to stop here. We're struggling. And McCauley has it now. And Kale Essling's also into the lineup, as is Andrews. Traveler carried it. And he carried it, yeah, on his hip. So CP will get the ball back here. Three minutes left in period number three. We need a bucket here. Esseline has it on top. He's going to bring it to the right side. And nice job by Grimm. That was a nice play. It looks like that could be there all night long. 32-30. Yeah. Grimm like just rises above everyone. Yeah, it looks like he should be able to get that shot almost every time down the floor. McCauley has it on top, gets it over to Smith. Carnical has it. He shoots it up and is off, rebounded by Grimm. That's good defense by He's Grimm. off and running. Oh. Man. Esling has it in the left corner. Andrews on top. Over to Savoa. He's going to shoot the three. It is off. Rebounded by Miller. He's going to put it up and in. Good job by Miller. Miller's got five points for the night. So under two minutes left here. CPU up by four. Smith has it. He's driving in. Good help Good by help. Esling. But that means McCauley's wide. Not going to be there. Dang. Box out. Uh, oh, man. And foul on Miller. And Seth Jackson put that in, and he'll go to the line to finish off the traditional three-point play. That's where uh, when you don't box out and they get the board, it, and you get the foul. That's yeah. the result of it. Lott, Wilson Breeze, and Keegan Jackson back in the lineup for the Hawks. For CPU, we have Covington, Brinks, and Holmes into the lineup. 
So a minute 34 left. And that one is Good off, shot. rebounded by Brinks. He's off and running. Holmes has it on the right side. Gets it over to Covington. Savoa has it now. Kenny's got a post up. There he did. And, and now we drove it. into him. Yeah, I drove right to him. And we're going to have a foul on the Hawks reaching in. Shot clock will start over. A minute seven left here in the third period. The CPU up by two. Who was it on? McCauley. Was on McCauley is second. Esseline taking it out, gets it deep to Brinks. Still think we try to get Covington a post up try here. And Savoa has it on the right side. Hawks really extending their defense. Now Brinks has it. 50 seconds in the quarter, 15 on the shot. Oh, he got hit. Yeah. Nice job by Brinks. Oh, but cannot get it to fall. He missed some point blank shots too. Over to Lott. Lott driving in. He's pushed uh, by Savoa, and it'll be two shots for Lott. Have a chance to tie it up here. Well, Savoa's fourth foul. That was not great defense there. <coughs> and so Lott will be at the line. Shooting 55% on the season and puts the first one up and in. It's two or two from the line tonight. Chance to tie it here. And up in Manchester, halfway through the third, CPU up by one, 22-21. That makes both of them, ties the ball game. And Smith comes in the lineup for the Hawks. Shot clock is off, so 33 seconds left here in the third period. Looks like we're going to be content with playing for the last shot here. All right, Brinks just dribbling it out here. 15 seconds left. He's driving in. Trying to get Holmes, Holmes. shot from the corner. Holmes driving in, lays it up and in, and Dang. and thrown up by Smith, and he is short, and will go to the fourth, all tied up. 34-34. This is Brent Winterhoff and Casey Essling on the Stormcast, home of CPU Athletics. A word from our sponsors here between quarters. Center Point Foods reminds you to shop local and win big. Center Point Foods is proud to sponsor CPU students in the area communities. Ability Physical Therapy and Center Point specializes in the evaluation and treatment of, orth of sports and orthopedic injuries. Call and schedule a free injury consult for sprains, strains, and pains today. Hiawatha Bank and Trust offers a wide range of banking services. They're invested in the community, and it all starts with our students. Best of luck, CPU from Hiawatha Bank and Trust. Discerning Wealth is a private wealth advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, LLC. They're dedicated to helping you make better financial decisions. Best of luck, CPU. Elite Fitness is a 24-hour facility which provides its members with the opportunity to achieve their fitness goals at their convenience. Speed School, personal training, and RMR testing are available for those who wish to take the next step in their fitness journey. Contact Elite Fitness and join today. So uh, third period um, ended, ended at a tie, 34 to 34. Uh, we gave up quite a few points in that quarter. We gave up 17, doubled their, uh, doubled their, their point total for the, for the game, and we only scored nine. So we got to play a little better. Uh, yeah, we need to second. pick it up on offense. Um, yeah, I think. Uh-oh, what are they going to call here? And they're calling a going to call a hold on the Hawks. That's too bad because we had a I shot know. wide open. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way it always happens. You get loose finally and get a good look. And they were holding, so it's yeah. good they called the foul. All right, CPU gets it out underneath. Not running the out-of-bounds play correctly. Looks like we're a little out of sorts there. Brinks has it on the right side. Man, get the ball into get Covington. Get it into Covington. Man, get it oh, back man. over here. Post up in, Jackson. Give him the ball. Now, now look oh. back. We can't, I don't yeah. know if we can't. 
post feed or what, but man, just he's got not, him. He's just got not him patient sealed. enough. Now, now, now they're now they're trying to switch it. Give him the ball, Jackson. All right, 10 seconds on the shot clock. Three-pointer is off. And that was a bad offensive series right yeah, there. Yeah, bad offensive series. All right, got a chance to play some good defense here and get it back. We're tied at 34. Smith has it. The other thing you notice, both of these teams, we never get any fast, neither team gets any fast break points. And I think that really gets you in the flow of the offense a little more and gets you in the groove. Yeah. But even if you push it and you don't get it, yeah, you're you kind just, of in your yeah, set. Yeah, you just get going. And that is off, rebounded by Covington. He gets it to, that was a three-pointer by Smith in the corner. It's a great rebound by Covington. Now they've switched the guy off of Covington, but like right now I'd have Brinks go post that guy up. Good drive by Andrews, a little off balance. And, oh, this, this down and... One. Could not fall. Keegan Jackson driving in. Going to have a foul on Grimm. That'll be CPU's first foul of the fourth period. So each team has one now. And Hawks will take it out underneath. CPU going to play man to man. Smith has it on top. Now Lott driving in. Well, that was a good defense. Oh, good but job. Oh, and cannot pick it up. And the ball is going to go to the Hawks. Looks like Andrews might have re-injured his ankle here. We'll see. No, we don't want that happening just after he got back here. Miller coming in for Andrews. And updated score. Hawks have scored nine straight and now, or eight straight, and now lead 29 22. Two minutes left in the third period. Lott has it in the corner. Gets it to Jackson. Now Wilson Breeze has it. He's driving in and is going to be fouled. And he will go to the line to shoot two. It's on Holmes. It's his first. And it's off on the first one there. Wilson he will Reese get his second. Hasn't scored yet tonight. He's averaging six, almost seven a game. And this one this is, is off. Oh, Rebounded by Miller. Gets it over to Brinks. They get it to Grimm. Grimm driving in. Good job, Good Cooper, Cooper took underneath there, put it up with his left hand, up and in. CP takes the lead, 36-34. Thought they were going to be in a press there, going to drop back. Oh, oh man, can't let that happen. Pick it out, three. Smith has it, he's driving in, and puts it in off the board, and ties it up at 36. CP pushing it up, Holmes has it. Oh, what an offensive foul. Not sure about that one, but. And so that'll be CPU's third team foul. It's always interesting when you spin and the guy falls down like you ram into him. So I, it's got to be a little bit of a flop there, but. All right, Lott bringing it down for the Hawks. 518 left, we're tied at 36. McCauley with the three is off, rebounded by Miller. That was, a, that was a big three. We didn't let, give up, luckily. we got to get an easy bucket again here. Oh, good job by Brinks and good oh. pass. Oh, man. He is we fouled. Just, we cannot make those bunnies. That was a great, great cut. Rather than handing it off, he cut back door, and Covington made a good pass. And so Brinks will be at the line for two. And first one is up and in. His first point of the game. And Savoa and Kale hustling into the lineup for the Storm and Pointers. 
And Brinks puts that one in. CPU has a lead, 38-36. Just under five minutes left in period number four. Oh boy, it looked like he almost carried it. It's good help by Grimm. Oh, we don't need to jump on those. Oh, stay down. Ooh. Had a hop on that catch. Smith puts it oh, up and in over Brinks. Shot. And we have a timeout by West Delaware with 435 left in the fourth. We are tied at 38. This is Brent Winterhoff and Casey Essling on the Stormcast, home of CPU Athletics. Here's a couple uh, CPU student profiles. This is uh, Ellie Winter. She's a senior at CPU. Activities she's involved in are garden club, student council, volleyball, and soccer. Uh, what artist or band would she like to see live in concert? Zach Bryan. What's her favorite board game? Trouble. What are, what's her favorite card game? King's Corner. Uh, would she choose a romantic comedy or an action movie? She said romantic comedy. When she graduates from high school, what's the one thing she's going to miss about CPU? Seeing her favorite teachers. And when she moves away from home, what's the one thing she'll miss about her family? And she said her sister. All right. So CPU has not scored up in Manchester. We're down 33-22 now with a minute left in the third period. Real lit on her basket, too. Yeah. All right, we are tied at 38s here. We've each scored four points in the... Get it in. Throw it in, we Kale. Just, we're just uh, struggling to make a post entry. All right, CPU moving it around here. Plenty of time on the shot clock. Essling has it on the left side. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Good oh, pass. nice. Oh. oh, and Miller can't put it in. I don't, it is amazing how many laps we've missed tonight. Essling. Travel. Oh, that is travel. travel. Oh, my goodness. No, you can't call a bobble. I mean, no, the there's guys, no, there's they no got to take that call away. A lot from the corner is oh, off, but man. no one boxes out. Everybody turned and ran to yep. the hoop. Ran to the hoop. That bobble call is yeah, a terrible Yeah, they need to call. get rid of it. Every it's time e I see them doing that with their hands. If they hands. bobble, it's either a travel or a double dribble. Lott has it again. He's going by Savoa. Oh, puts it up for two. Bad Hawks defense. take the lead. Bad defense by Savoa. Three fourteen left. Hawks up by two. Nice job. Oh, get it. Cooper got his own rebound there. Out. Beautiful shot. Man, kick it out. Yeah, left side, puts it up for two, ties it at 40. We're going to have a timeout by Coach Halleck. Got some new people coming in on both sides there. With 2.57 left in the fourth, we are tied at 40. This is Brent Winterhoff and Casey Essling on the Stormcast, home of CPU Athletics. I'll do one more student profile here. This is uh, Alexis Kirk. She's a senior as well. She's involved in cheer and archery. Uh, what's the best gift that she's ever received? Her car. What does she consider her biggest accomplishment so far? Nationals for archery. And what's one thing that makes her laugh? And she said her friends. That is good. Yes. All right. So we are tied at 40 here. I think first to 45 is going to win this thing. Well, could Let's be. See. Well, our average... CPU's average is 45 a game, and they average 42, so we're right. We're, we're right in the ballpark yeah, here. Not, Somebody needs to our, take off here in the last three minutes. Not blowing our averages out of the water tonight. All right, we're going to have a zone by CPU here. Let's see what happens Lott here. has it. Now Smith, they get it inside to Keegan Jackson. Get it inside to Jackson again. He tries to throw it. Pick. Oh. oh, my goodness. He turned it over, and we yeah, just couldn't grab it. He tried it. to throw it across the lane. It was not there. He was triple teamed at that point. Somehow he knocked it off of us. Couldn't grab it. What is the deal here? Don't know what they're calling. Oh, they want to know if they should start the shot clock over or not. Oh, no, because um, he never... We no never, one had we never possession. Obtained, we never obtained possession of it. So that means there should be about. I have no I don't idea. Know, it was like 23 seconds or something like that. Wasn't it at 249? 
I could always replay our broadcast yeah, here yeah. and see if you we could help uh, them out, right? <laughs> You'd be the instant replay uh, official there. Wouldn't that be a fun job? Yeah. <laughs> well, we got 15. Oh, 15. That, that works. We'll take it. All right, so 15 seconds left on the shot clock. They get it in to Lott. Grim on him. Both teams have fouls to give. So oh, oh, help, help, help. Oh, ah. Good pass. Nice. Good rebound by They uh, had to go over and Jackson. help and rebounded by Seth Jackson. Seth put Jackson in. puts it in. Hawks up by two. 2.18 left here in period number four. That's and a, a reach in by yeah. Smith. That's only the third team foul on the Hawks. You know, really at this point, not a bad foul. Gets no. you to three. It's only his first. And you might you might be able to get a get a run out out of it too. Brinks. And they lob it up to Grimm. Grimm has it in the middle of the lane. Now he goes. He's right all left. over him. That's a foul. And, yeah. Oh, Good job nice by move Grimm. by Grimm. Puts it in on the right side. Ties it up at 42. It'll go to the line to give the Storm and Pointers a one-point lead. You know, I'm always worried in that spot they're going to call travel. His yeah. pivot foot is stopped, so, and he moves his the other foot twice. Yeah. And I'm always worried they're going to call that travel because often they do. Yeah, because it looks, looks kind of different when you do it. And he does have long legs, too, which yeah, does help. He can go away on a pivot. Grimm puts that in, gives Storm Pointers the lead. 2.06 left, CPU up 43-42. Cooper's got 15 for the night. He's got a, had a good second half. CPU going to stay in this zone, going to have to rebound tough. It's always yeah. tough to rebound out of a zone. Box out, don't let him get an easy look. And Grimm is just covering the guy yeah. in the middle there. Lots driving in. What are they going to call? They're going to call it on the floor. Huh. 23 on Holmes. on Holmes. It's Holmes' third foul. So the next foul, both teams will be shooting. So it'll be two shots. Resets the shot clock, so they get a whole another 35. And they get it out man-to-man -man now by the Storm and Pointers. I think that's a good idea. I think we don't play a lot of zones, so it's hard to... Yeah. Hard to play well down the stretch with that. Oh, Keegan Jackson for three is off, oh, but no out. rebound. Oh, oh, nobody boxed him Smith out. Smith going to shoot the three. It is off, and Good we did again. rebound again. Re oh, blocked by Miller. Third, third rebound. And they're going to kick it out, and we're going to wow. have a timeout by the Hawks. So with a minute 15 left in the fourth, minute 16, 43-42, Storm and Pointer lead. That was one of those possessions that was key for us to get a rebound. Yes, and we, one shot. One they shot. They get one shot. And we actually we made him take the shot. We were there we were in the and right we left. Position, yeah. we, I don't know if, who they thought was getting the rebound. but each, each time the guy that shot it got the rebound. He just Our guy just yeah, sort of At that point, we didn't need a, a run, run out. out. We no. just need the ball. Need so the, anyway, the Hawks will have the ball. So the shot clock is at 29. And so CP will get the ball back no matter yeah. what. But we do need to. Uh, I think there's what, a minute? A minute nine, minute, minute four, minute, yeah. something like that left. So we will see here. Both teams looking for their first victory of the season. So you can feel the tightness <laughs> just a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, some of those threes, they're just short there. They want to make it so bad. And yeah, they're, they're getting open looks too. All right. So Hawks will have the ball underneath their own basket. On the court for CPU, Miller, Covington, Brinks, uh, Andrews, and Grimm. Minute 16 left in the game. CPU's up by one. Man to man by the Storm and Pointers. So Smith has it on top. Looks like they're setting up a. Wilson Breeze has it over to Lott. I haven't seen him shoot one yet. And he tonight. shoots that, but rebounded by Covington, gets it to Grimm. He likes 35 seconds left. Andrews has it. Now back to Grimm. I'd clear it out and let Cooper go to the rim. Or post Covington up and have. Yeah, or set a pick and have yeah. him go on the right side, Covington on the left. Yeah. 
All right, one point, Storm and Pointer lead. CPU's flat. Yep. Cooper's going to the rim here. Good take. Oh, rebounded by Grimm. Shot clock did not no, reset. No, no, no. Didn't hit the rim. Go. Or no, it did reset. Oh, or it did not reset. It shouldn't have reset. It didn't hit the rim. I think there's about eight seconds left on the shot clock. Yeah, I don't think it hit I, and the rim. It, I thought it was right. Yeah, and then, then at the last second, it looked like it was reset and off. And I don't know who signals to reset. I know. Eight, Eight seconds yeah. on the shot clock. That's, a, that's about what I thought yeah. it was. I, I think we do the same play. Just have Grimm yeah. go to the middle, shoot his jump shot. He has a beautiful jump yeah. shot. And I don't know who's going to go up and block well, it's, it. It's hard to defend because when he turns and fades yep. a little bit. See, he needs to just go right at this guy. I don't know why Grimm's giving it up. Oh. Oh, he Oh, yeah. I was going to say the guy started walking. Yeah, they called it there. I mean, it looked like he had a possession of it. And yeah. he, it hadn't, I know it hadn't hit the rim, but then he, then he started walking. And All right, good. 20, 18 seconds left here. Man-to-man -man by the Storm and Pointer. We're going to have a timeout by the Hawks. He was so <laughs> CPU up by one. Coach wanted just to come yeah, across the line. He, he wanted, wanted to keep playing. He wanted to, he wanted to attack the rim. I don't blame him. He's ready to win a game. So. All right. So CPU up by one. 15, 15 seconds, seconds left. left. And, you know, Storm and Pointers will probably come out in that man-to-man -man again. They're really going to have to watch because it looks like they're going to take it hard to the hoop. And if there is a foul, no matter where it is, yeah. they will shoot two. They're shooting free throws. That's so, going to be um, probably the biggest thing if we can stop the drive. I mean, they've had they've had two guy, no, three guys hit threes. Uh, Conrad Smith has two threes. Austin McCauley's got two threes, and Austin Snyder's has one. But overall, they're not they're not shooting great threes. I'd rather give up a, a three look than a than a layup or an easy bucket inside. But we got to box out. Yes. We can't give up more than one shot in this last possession. Because yes, if I were them, I wouldn't. I would I would go right away because at 15 seconds, you got to give. If you miss, you got to get a chance to foul and yeah. get the ball back. So yeah. it's going to be important for them. Let's we'll see what uh, Jake Screen's got drawn up here. As they come out of this time. So the Hawks are going to get the ball right by the scorer's bench. Again, man-to-man -man by the Storm and Pointers. CPU's got tons of timeouts. And uh, and they're going to take another one here. Yeah, it looks like CPU's going to take one. All Leave. right, so quickly, upcoming events at CPU. On the Stormcast Thursday night, we will be having girls and boys wrestling right here. And on Friday night, we will have JV Varsity Girls Basketball against Marion. And then the following Monday, we will have JV and Varsity Girls Basketball against Vinton Shellsburg right here. So lots of action. Hopefully the weather will be warm by then and we'll start to get back to normal here. And an update up in Manchester, Hawks. Are up by 10 here with three minutes left of the game, 45 to 35. All right, Hawks will have the ball. 15 seconds here. Lot has it on the left side here. Don't, Don't want to oh, foul. Man, that was a foul on the 12. Three pointer by Wilson Breeze is off. And out of, out of bounds for the Hawks. Three seconds left. Well, that was a good look, but he was <laughs> completely missed her. And we're going to have a timeout by the Hawks. That's their final timeout. So no more timeouts for the Hawks. Again, next foul. So if they foul CPU, they will be going yep. to the line, but that'll take them clear to the other end here. So we'll see how that plays out. This is a 30-second timeout, so not much time. Yeah, this is where you don't want to throw it under the basket and get a turnover and then put it, put it in. Yeah, you'd be better to throw it to three-quarters yeah. court and have somebody touch it. Yeah. If you can. So we will see here. Both teams we talked about looking for their first victory of the season. Both teams have played some close games, just yeah. haven't been able to get over the hump. We haven't quite made it to 45, but that was the <laughs> magic number for me tonight. That yeah, was. We'll see. We'll see if we can get there. All right, so CP is going to get the ball out underneath the Hawk basket. They're going to line up four cross. Andrews taking it out. 
And they're grabbing Esling already, or they caught him grabbing Grimm. I don't know which one. And so Kale's going to go to the line to shoot two. And you get to shoot two now, so it, no one and ones anymore. And Esling for the first ones, up and in. And Covington coming in. And whatever you do, do not foul on the shot no, here. No, no reason true. for it. Esling shooting the second one here. And that one is oh. off. Rebounded by Jackson, and Essling steals it and seals the victory for the Storm and Pointers as they win 44-42. A good win for A good for win. Um, both teams will probably say this isn't the best games they played this year. You could just feel in the fourth quarter both teams just wanted to win. Yeah. Um, both teams played hard. It was a good, good, good win. Yeah, and luckily CPU came out on top here. And they... And they will go to Marion on Friday night, and the girls will play right here. All right, we'll get a quick update on the score. Still a 10-point game down there. Uh, Hawks ahead of the Storm and Pointers with just about over two minutes left here. And we're going to have a – there's a charge on CPU, so Hawks will get the ball back still up by 10. All right, thanks, everybody, for joining us on the Stormcast tonight, home of CPU Athletics. Sponsors for the Stormcast are Centerpoint Foods, the Coppa Dryer Family, Hiawatha Bank and Trust, Ability Physical Therapy, Centerpoint Family Dentistry, Discerning Wealth, Dennis Miller Family, Elite Fitness, and the CPU All Sports Booster Club. This is Brent Winterhoff and KC Essling signing off from Centerpoint, where the Storm and Pointers get their first victory of the season, 44-42 over the Hawks. Join us for our next broadcast on Thursday. January 18th as the CP Wrestling Team hosts Marion. That's girls and boys starting at 6. Thanks for joining us tonight, and go Storm and Pointers.